All right, today we're going to do a diaphragm replacement on a JBL. Uh, this model is a 2412H. The 2412H-1 is similar. And you'll see these uh, small JBL drivers in a lot of uh, different cabinets, uh, including the uh, many of the smaller Eon cabinets, uh, the JRX series cabinets, uh, the TR series cabinets. Uh, as well as the sound factor cabinets uh, are very common uh, with the use of this particular driver. It is one of the more uh, delicate drivers that JBL makes, so we see quite a few of these in for repair. And uh, you can do your own repair on these uh, very easily, and we'll show you how to do that today. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, once the driver, of course, is removed from the cabinet, is a quarter-inch nut driver to remove the four screws. You'll see here that there are three non-used holes there that kind of make it easy to line everything back up. But we like to take a marker and put a little line right at the top here and right on the magnet as well, just like that. Okay, so it makes it easier for you to remember how to line the pieces back together uh, once you get the old diaphragm apart. So we'll start by just simply removing the four screws here like this. Just set those aside because you will reuse those later. And then you'll notice at this point that we have uh, three pieces here. We have the magnet assembly here, we have the diaphragm sandwiched in between the magnet assembly and the thread on top plate uh, for the uh, horn lens here. And these simply remove, as you can see, uh, just like this. So we'll set this piece aside. This is the piece here that we're going to replace. And uh, this is the diaphragm um, that has failed. So we'll remove this particular unit here. And we can see right away that the diaphragm has uh, been overheated. The voice coil is severely separated here. And this is very common when we have uh, overpowering that happens with these particular units. Uh, feedback through a microphone, something like that can cause this. Uh, power burst through the amplifier, or simply just you know overdriving the unit is, is the most common uh, problem that we see on this. So there's nothing to save here. This is discarded, and we'll replace the entire diaphragm assembly. Uh, the new one looks like this. You'll notice here we remove it from the packaging. And it's the same exact diaphragm, but it's built on uh, a black uh, hard plastic plate as opposed to the metal plate. Same assembly, same diaphragm, same moving components uh, as the original diaphragm. And uh, you'll notice that the same hole pattern is here, so it's very easy to install this. So we'll set this in uh, its case here for just a moment. And the first thing we want to do anytime we have especially a burning in the coil area like that is to, to clean the magnetic gap. So we take a little piece of uh, masking tape here best to just wrap it uh, sticky side out around a business card like this and you'll want to insert that right into the magnet gap and run that around a few times to make sure that we don't have any particles left <coughs> inside the magnet gap and that's very important so we always want to do that as you can see here I'll kind of lift this up for the camera and you can see what we're doing there okay so once that's completed we kind of set that aside just do a visual, make sure that the inside of the magnet cap looks clean, and in this case it does. There's no extra voice coil wires or windings hanging inside the magnet plate, and that's very important. And you'll notice here we still have our mark um, from the removal of the original diaphragm. So we'll take the new diaphragm assembly, and I'd like to put a date on the back of it just to show when it was installed to keep track uh, of the installation date. And that's, you know, that's important for us here at the shop. Uh, you don't have to do this at home, but uh, in, in our case it's very helpful. So we'll put today's date on here just like that and that way we have an indication of when this unit was replaced um, should it fail prematurely we would know um, based on the date so we'll go ahead and basically you'll notice here also there's three tabs on the diaphragm that's what centers the diaphragm assembly on the magnet plate so that's very easy for you just set that back in place like this and then again you'll note on your re the top plate that you're going to reuse that we still have the mark here so again very straightforward uh, for the installation there. Just line that up and you are good to go. The best thing to do is just set the screws in place like this. Give them each a turn or two just by hand to get them started. Just like this. And I'll show you here in just a second Okay, what you're after. Okay, Screws have been installed. Just tightened by hand at this point. Okay, Quarter inch driver again. Go ahead and do them Kind of a crisscross pattern is best. Just snug it first, okay? And then we'll go back and give each one a quarter turn. All right. Again, crisscross pattern for that. 
and at that point you should be good to go. The last thing we'll want to do of course is test the diaphragm. Uh, we always have on these types of repairs our signal generator leads set up here. Um, on these diaphragms the large terminal here um, is the positive. The small terminal here is the negative so you can't mix those up when you go back into the cabinet with this particular driver which makes things very easy. Uh, so we'll go ahead and connect our generator here at this point. We have it set at 1000 Hertz at about uh, 2 volts. Go ahead and apply it there. And that is what you want. Nice and clean, no distortion. This particular driver, uh, 2412H JBL, is ready to go back into the cabinet and should provide uh, several more years of service uh, unless there's you know another accident or something of that nature. But she is good to go and uh, that takes care of the 2412H JBL.